What's up YouTube? With a softening real estate market, it's actually normal to have home inspection conditions in your offers these days. Now, I've been in and out of hundreds of houses and I wanna make sure that you know what you should be looking for, especially when a lot of this stuff is visual and you may not be able to see it on your own. So please draft in behind me, go check out this video. It's actually gonna be a two part series Today we're gonna to be focusing on the inside of properties, the mechanicals. These are some things that are gonna be big ticket items if you aren't sure what you're looking at, all right? So, and also make sure you stay tuned right to the very end. There is a super cool feature that you don't get to see on hardly any properties, all right? So, draft in behind me, follow along, and let's go see all the different things that you should be paying attention to before you go firm on your offer these days. Let's jump in. What's up YouTube? I'm not a home inspector, but I've literally been in and out of hundreds and hundreds of homes. Let me show you what I look for, especially in a century home, before I buy it. Let's jump right in. Okay, so we're in a basement of a large century commercial building, and we're just gonna go through all the different mechanicals quickly as possible to keep you as engaged as possible here too. This is the boiler system here as well. You wanna make sure that the venting is in good shape. We're gonna be looking at uh, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, all the major components. And some of these things are big cash call items here too. So you wanna make sure that you know what you're talking about, including foundations, okay? So all the joints here look good. Uh, there is no asbestos tape on anything here in the basement because sometimes in older buildings you would see asbestos tape wrapped around these sorts of things. You need to make sure it's remediated properly because it can actually cause major issues with your lungs. Hot water tank seems to be good. You can always look at the date here. Sometimes the serial number will give it away. Um, most home inspectors can look up the serial number and then let you know how old the hot water tank is. Usually these things only last 15 or 20 years. But looking up to the ceiling here, I see a lot of copper that's been replaced. These are copper water lines that is cold to the touch, so that's gonna be a cold water line. These are going to be, uh, there's actually some Winsboro, some plastic PEX pipe here that's been tied in. You can tie it in as long as you have the right joints, okay? Any, any building really that's gonna be used for income purposes, you wanna make sure that there are uh, sprinklers and fireproofing done here. So down here, I do see some sprinklers that are tied off of some of these bigger pipes here. In case there ever is a fire, this is gonna start pouring water, okay? There is, a, it's triggered by an electronic system down here too. All the wiring on the ceiling has been properly done. You can see it's tacked every two feet or 18 inches or so. So that's good, this is commercial BX grade wire. When you see things like this here, this is probably gonna be old cable line or telephone, that sort of thing. So don't get too worried about all these little wires running around here. Here's an example of some old piping. You definitely want to avoid this. This is galvanized plumbing. Now I have properties that have galvanized plumbing in it. We try to cut out as much as possible because when you look at the inside, the water pressure just gets to be terrible. It's kind of like having a corroded artery, okay? Uh, three quarter inch pipe ends up being half as wide. And then you wonder why you get a little bit of orange water coming out of the pipes once in a while too. So try to get rid of galvanized plumbing. It is not the worst repair in the world, but it can also be invasive. You're cutting holes in ceilings and different things like that to replace it. Again, lots of telephone and cable here. But what I do see here is another wire that's got like a fiber coating on it. That could be ungrounded. You'd wanna trace that back to the source. I don't have my wire tester with me right now, but you can literally tap it with a grounding tester to see if it's grounded or not. Lots of other cable for telephone or security. Uh, otherwise, it's looking pretty clean. All right, let's go over and check out the foundation. So again, foundations, the biggest thing that you're looking for is has there been any water penetration? Because if you ever did have to waterproof a basement, it is big bucks. And lots of times it's just about getting the water away from the house, like making sure you have downspouts and eaves troughs that are actually working properly. I do see some effervescence down here. That's the whitish color. That's gonna happen just because of moisture coming in and out. Now these blocks are absolutely massive. They're, they're over a foot thick but there has been some water damage here before. I can tell by looking down on the floor. Whenever you see these white lines on the floor, that's because it's washing away some of the you know, dust and powder away from the walls. Here's a real true tail sign is when you look at the bottom of any kind of wood that's been sitting near the ground here, this shows that there has been some water damage because as it's sitting, it soaks it up because it's, you know, it's fibrous, so it used to be alive, right? just like a root, so you know, you're gonna see some water damage that way here too, but it's super solid, it's not going anywhere, and the humidity levels down here, I, I've got a pretty sensitive nose, so it's not damp down here, it's not moldy down here, um, it was probably just like a one-time thing that happened, and it's all good right now, okay? So we've looked at foundations, we've looked at a little bit of HVAC, 
Here's some more HVAC here as well. This would be some more modern ducting for a furnace. And you'd wanna check all the different joints because again, they used to put asbestos wrap around those joints. I don't see any here, so that's super clean. It passes with flying colors. Let's go down there and check the main supply water line coming into the building, as well as some of the main stacks for water uh, sewage. Before we get there though, I mean, literally look at the size of this supporting beam here. <laughs> Like literally this is over 12 by 12. This might be 14 by 14. You can see the huge split and crack in there, which does happen over time. You can see that they've braced it and supported it properly. All these different things don't have cuts in them, which is good. Lots of times when you're, when you're in the basement of a house, you'll see notches in the supporting joists, which is a big no-no. Even though the wood used to be way better back then, you still don't want to see a whole bunch of notches in the supporting joists of your building structure. Everything still looks clean up until here. I'm seeing some uh, thicker drywall here, which means some of this stuff has been fire rated. Here is your, uh, this is your fire detector in the basement. So when this senses a really increase, uh, a rapid increase in temperature, it's gonna signal all the smoke, uh, all the sprinklers to go off, okay? All right, just walking around here, I see this, this is really interesting. You can actually see the grain and pattern of like wood planks here, right? And this would have been the way that they would have formed up a cement wall. So we got a firewall over there. We got this like solid cement wall. Let's go over and check out why this is here. This is super interesting. Okay, I see why. There's literally a vault <laughs> here, okay? Uh, at least two inches thick and holy cow, uh, 18 inches thick of cement. So they've literally built a vault down the basement, which makes sense. This building used to be owned by CIBC, which is a Canadian bank. So yeah, there would be no getting into this vault back in the day. Kind of cool if you can find a place like this, this would be a great bunker in case there's ever a war or something like that. But very rare to see this, but we just wanted to show you on video <laughs> what this is all about. All right, so we've traced all the wires back to the main panel area here. Now, the first thing that I'm noticing that you're probably seeing here as well is there is no cover on this panel. But it does look like a fairly clean electrical job. I know this looks like a, like a hornet's nest here, but they're using morets and things like that. But again, you probably want to get a qualified certified electrician to be looking at all this sort of stuff. But you got your shutoffs here. Everything is labeled. This is a 200 amp service here. And the other thing that I noticed is this isn't really taped off up here. This is a high voltage wire. Hopefully it is dead. But again, I don't have a way to test that right now. So make sure that you don't get too far into testing electrical yourself. Save this for the pros. Oh, what do I see over here? So. You'll be able to know that this is your water meter coming in, okay? And this is the pipe coming in from the city side. So if you ever have to shut the water off, always shut it off on the city side, because if anything ever happens, the city is responsible. Lots of times the shutoffs are gonna be on your side though. So for example, this would be the shut off to the whole building. If I wanted to shut the water off to do any plumbing work, there it is right there. Must have been teeing off here to do something. This is an old galvanized pipe as well. You can see why they want to replace it. Just look at all that. That's just like disaster waiting to happen. Now, sometimes these supply lines are made out of lead and we don't want to have lead in our buildings or in our drinking water because it can cause, you know, some issues with rain cognitivity and just toxic overall. So you could take a key, scrape the pipe here and I'm seeing it's coming up orange. So that's just a good way to show that it's copper. Copper is kind of like the standard these days that you'd want to have. Lots of new builds are being done with PEX pipe because it's a lot quicker and easier to run. But look at this main stack here. This main stack has got to be at least eight inches wide. You can see a lot of rusting and a lot of corrosion. I mean, this is going to happen over time, but eventually you will need to replace this because if this ever breaks, like literally it is very fragile. I could hit this with a sledgehammer and it would just shatter. You know, the harder things are, the more brutal they are sometimes too. I'm starting to see some cracking in the pipe here. So, you know, it will leak at the joints eventually. But this could be a really big cash call if this ever does happen to go. You can see that it's corroding here right at the, at the vent. This is a vent so that, you know, it can get proper flow. I can feel, yeah, some vent holes on top of it there. All right. Whoever owns this building here would have to make sure if it's going to be you someday, make sure that you have some money budgeted to replace this. Or maybe this could be a negotiation point for you as well. I do see some examples of cutting things out of the ceiling here. Literally, there's a little bit of notching right there. But look how every single piece of wood here that goes across is literally like a two by six. So all these... All these pieces of wood here, it makes it look like a bowling alley. They are literally all supporting the structure. It is just built so beefy back in the day. It is ridiculous. You can see how thick the foundation is if you look at the window well. So keep in mind that this window is gonna be three or four inches thick and I'm already got 10 inches here. So these walls have gotta be like 15 to 18 inches thick. So this thing is literally built like a tank. Somebody cleaned this up quite some time ago. I don't really see much down here to be worried about. This would be a firewall typically right here. They would put in a cylinder block firewall if you're trying to get a fire separation here to another unit or something of that nature. Lots of copper. 
no active galvanized, no active knob and tube. So I would say, hey, this property is like thumbs up to me. I didn't really find anything down here that could really be negotiated against except for that, that main stack, which could still last another 30 years and be no problem. So those are just a couple tips for you. As a real estate investor, you want to know what you're buying, okay? You want to be educated. And I just learned this by getting in and out of a lot of different properties. So don't be afraid to get in the basements of these properties. Look around the outside of the building. Look on the roofs of the building. Make sure that you have a checklist of the do's and don'ts before you close on a property. Hopefully this was helpful. If you like this video, make sure you smash that like button. Uh, give us a subscribe to the channel and drop a comment down below with one of the most important things that you look for when you are buying.